This is Anna from Ecuador. In early 2011, she needed a pacemaker because she couldn't afford the $2,000 cost. This is the device that she needed. A pacemaker can cost up to $10,000. In the developed world, 750 are implanted per million inhabitants, yet in the developing world, only 50 are implanted per million every year. Yet millions of pacemakers lay waste in funeral parlors, mortuaries, and hospitals worldwide. Pace for Life is a non-profit organization that reuses pacemakers for impoverished individuals in the developing world. My name is Lovin. I'm the director and founder of Pace for Life. I have a background in science with a master's in chemistry and over 12 years business experience in investment banking and management consultancy. Behind me, I have a very, very strong team with over 50 years of cardiology experience. Dr. Thomas Crawford, Professor Kim Eagle and Dr. Stuart Allen and also a lawyer with over 15 years experience in the UK and US market, Dr. Helen Holmes. Sorry, Helen Holmes. And amongst us, we have a number of partners, including Biotronic, one of the four largest pacemaker manufacturers in the world. Together, we've made a lot of progress. We've got 40, 43 funeral parlors collecting pacemakers on our behalf, and in just over a month, we've collected 283 with 35,000 our annual target in the UK alone. We have the FDA approval and the NHS support for implantation and sterilization and testing. And we've also got letters of approval from the Ministry of Health in Ghana and Pakistan. We've established our cost to be as little as $200 per pacemaker for an implantation. And we're looking to kind of raise revenue by recyc recycling pacemakers that are not fit for human or animal reuse at $100 per kilogram, approximately 30 pacemakers for this valuable silver, platinum, gold, and platinum. In addition, we're also looking to sell pacemakers for animal use. I know, a bit surprising, but our human pacemakers are reused in cats, dogs, and horses. Anna received a pacemaker in late 2011 via the University of Michigan, partners of Pace for Life. They've been conducting research into the reuse of pacemakers for over three years. Together, we want her to be the first of millions. We're looking for $500,000, $300,000 to continue our research, and $200,000 to continue saving millions of lives. We've actually scheduled our first official implantation. Actually, it's going to be 20, sponsored by Biotronic, and it's going to be in Ghana on the 25th of May. So thank you. My name is Lovin, and I'm Pace for Life. Any questions? Are you guys working with, directly with funeral parlors, or have you thought about actually working with cardiologists who, once every ten years, actually exchange pacemakers? Um, so you can't change the battery in a pacemaker. So what we're targeting are pacemakers which have 70% battery life or more, which we currently, on statistics of collection that we've done today are approximately about 20% of the market. We're expecting about 30% or more fit for animal use between 30% and 70% battery life, the rest being recycled for the valuable metal, metals. So the target market in terms of really kind of getting the most volume of pacemakers is actually at funeral parlors and mortuaries, not hospitals where they're typically swapped out. When a patient dies and has an autopsy, whose pacemaker is that? It's a good, good, good question. So. Typically in the developed world, it's actually the possession of the patient. And legally, that's not typically addressed in the US or the UK market. So what we've done is we've actually legally created donation forms for family members or for the patients to sign and donate pacemakers in three key areas, either for the reuse uh, in animals, reuse in uh, humans, or for research purposes. Or ideally, they would tick all three boxes and hand that over to us. So what we've got, one of the uh, largest funeral parlors in the UK, who have 43 branches, are actually collecting pacemakers and getting family members or patients to actually sign these away, tagging them to the individual pacemakers and then collecting them. So when there's a critical mass, we will collect them, test them, and hope to implant them. So, so your marketing target, 
likely as cardiologists to get this form signed at the time of implantation? Uh, combination, I think so. I think in the long term, I think the plan is to really kind of go down the organ donor route and try and get this into that, into that as a mechanism. Ideally, my dream would for Pace for Life not to exist, and we could fragment what we do and push it back into the existing organisations and walk away. Anything else? Have you actually talked with organ donation networks? Not as yet. What I'm really looking for is to kind of really get our product out there, which is essentially our first implantation. Then I've really got a story to kind of go out there and hawk. Um, there has been a lot of interest, but obviously people are saying, well, you've not really quite done it yet. After the 25th of May, we're ready to go. It's, it's the money that you're looking for. You're a non-profit, right? A non-profit. And what's the, you're looking for donations? Donations. People have got tax returns due. <laughs> I'll be passing the hat around at the end, don't worry. Hi, how are you? 